A very short two weeks before the 2014 World Cup begins, and the 2022 World Cup refuses to go away, as stories of corruption in the bidding process for that tournament resurface. I'm here with Roger Blitz, the FT's Leisure Industries correspondent. Roger, why have these stories reappeared now? It seems they've been kicking around for two or three years at least. Indeed, this vote was given to this decision was given to Qatar in December 2010. Mm. At the same time, they also gave the 2018 World Cup to Russia. This was a small electorate of less than 25 people deciding such big decisions and there's always been a feeling that why a tiny Gulf state with no football heritage should suddenly win the 2022 World Cup has been the, been the acid question. And we have some revelations on that topic. We, we have. There's never been any uh, anything to connect any form of corrupt payments to this. And what these revelations suggest, suggest is that there may be a link between the bid organisers of Qatar and Mohammed bin Hammam, former... Uh, president of the Asian Football Confederation, who appears to have been making lots of payments to individuals who had some kind of connection to the vote. And who would be in a position to have this sort of information? Where, where did the new revelations come from? Do we have any idea? Well, what we know this was that the, the Sunday Times, which has published the first tranche of these uh, emails, is saying that there's huge amounts, millions of doc documents, emails, uh, financial records, which suggests who, the, who on earth could possibly have these, which, which makes you think that, that there are forces beyond football, much more geopolitical forces right. at play here. Mm. Now, how do we believe this is going to play out? Is Qatar going to lose the games? Are they going to have to vote again? And does that mean the location of the 18 games are in question as well? People have said that, uh, that it's implausible that Qatar would have the 2022 World Cup removed because there wasn't this evidence. And for the first time, we're now hearing these voices come up and say, actually, perhaps we really do have the evidence. There's this guy, Michael Garcia, who's FIFA's uh, ethics investigator, who is look, who's been looking at this for two years, who doesn't appear to have had all this information that's just been published. So it could be that the so-called smoking gun may actually emerge. So the question is, uh, would FIFA then take that evidence and take it away? Uh, and they've always said that unless there isn't this information, we will, we will hold it in Qatar. Do you think this story reflects something intrinsic to the culture of FIFA? Oh, absolutely, because I think that the whole culture of payments where money was going out was so loose. The governance of FIFA has been so poor back in 2010, 2011, uh, and it stretches back to a decade and more of FIFA having problems over bribery allegations, which they're only now starting to get right with be better corporate governance. So there's still a long way to go. Sounds like the chickens have come home to roost. Thanks, Roger.